So what I've got for the um, visualizer is is relatively basic, but it takes the whole of um, that what would be the JSON file, creates a web page, and then displays all of the details, and it'll it does it um, and it successfully groups everything. Mm -hmm. So all the messages that happened on like node four happen. They're horizontally aligned. So one of the problems I've found at um, the moment is there's just a fair bit of data, like um, exception details and things like that, that never actually gets into what would be the um, JSON file. So I need to figure out how to get that data in, because that's kind of useful stuff, like the exception messages and things like that. Um. Did you see the uh, that pull request for a test in this week? We added that new uh, that new X Unit two extension for when you're doing parallel tests. It's basically it adds a bunch of locking enhancements and that sort of thing. Okay, no, so I, I haven't had a look at that. Take a look at that. And one other thing you might want to look at is where we might be losing data might actually be in, when we're doing that standard out uh, redirection, we might be truncating some of the lines that are occurring there. Um, yeah. So it, it might be part of the inner process communication where stuff's getting dropped. So yeah, because the data is getting recorded to like the, the test log. So I can see that data, but it's not getting recorded in that um, test tree. Um, I can't remember what the full name and the type was, but the, the one that eventually gets serialized is the, the JSON file. So in terms of uh, how you sort of expect this to work, is the idea that once the multi-node test is done, that you're going to go into the HTML file that has all of that data embedded into it, so it's like a static file, like example? <laughs> yeah, so in, in much the same way we if something went wrong, you'd dig into that JSON file to figure out the details of what went wrong. Um, the static HTML would be exactly the same uh, data, but what it would um, would do is it would allow um, you to just see the, the sequencing very nicely. Uh, I don't have anything local. Uh, it's just a little, I dropped one image into Gitter early in the week. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Is, uh, so I've gotten the next step on from that. So at the moment, um, that image just shows like everything just clumped together. So I've gotten the next step where it kind of separates them out. Uh, but I've also got, I, I still got to spend some time just changing the colors so that the, the past stuff is a little bit more noticeable. And I want to put in, um, just reduce the amount of data that gets shown in a couple of places. So you know, there's the, the there's that long string and it ends with past, and we don't really care about that long string. And I can put it as a tooltip, and then we can just have like past or just a tick box. So just to reduce some of the noise. Yep. Yeah, that sounds good. Um... So I, I think that that's, if you can finish that, I think that will really improve the quality that the quality of experience people have with multi-node test runner. So I, I would encourage you to keep making that your, your primary thing. Um, 
happens, I think that, that'll make a bigger difference than forwarding an individual test scroll. So keep going with that. Um, is there anything you need as far as help goes with that? Or are you pretty clear on what you need to do? It's just a matter of time. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. I had a, I had a fair bit of time in the beginning of the week, but then things took a, took all of it, so I just haven't had a chance to. Because what what I'd like to do is um, just show, give a show, um, so create a few little like screenshots or whatever, and show if, uh, what everybody can see, and then they can kind of say, well, I don't like this, I do like this, and then I can check it in and. We can expand the the level of um, sort of changing those uh, blocks, make them a bit more graphical, smaller in some cases for details that we don't care about so much. Hey, uh, Suhas, is my audio better now? Yes, yeah, slightly better. Okay. Yeah. You know what's going on? I just realized is my USB microphone is not being picked up at all at the moment. So oh, okay. That would do it. Is it Windows 10 thing? Because uh, I realized that Hangouts doesn't work on my Windows or Windows 10 laptop. So I'm back to my old Apple laptop now. OK, now how does that sound? That's that better. Yeah. A lot better. OK, good. So now yeah. my USB microphone is working. So <laughs> um, before I had my little speaker all the way up here, because I assume this was on. So that's why my audio wasn't very good. Um, yeah. OK, sorry about that. Um, thanks for bringing it up. Um, <clears throat> OK, well, Graham, um, keep up the good work on, on that stuff then. And uh, yeah, I lo love seeing the progress on it. And that'll be, that'll be a huge addition when we get that out. Um, so Suhas, I had a question for you. Uh, did you want to take on that issue of deal dealing with the Team City formatting of the pass-fail messages? So that shows up inside. When we go to review, like, tests that failed, we can go and see that right there, rather than having to drill into the error log. Yeah, yeah, I can take that up. It's just that uh, I have some committed code uh, in my fork, which is a test of, uh, from Scala version that I ported. And mm -hmm. I'm just facing this problem with being able to debug multi-node uh, test runner. I mean, 9 out of 10 times, module 0 just hangs, or no breakpoints hit, everything stops. So there's one... So weird. Yeah, so I don't know. It's just me or what? I mean, I I literally removed all versions of Visual Studio I have on my machine and just kept 2015, like reinstalled 2015 from scratch. And so I, it, it works sometimes. So I managed to fix the issues with my test, but there's still one more, and I'm just a bit frustrated with that. So yeah, I'm happy to take on the Team City uh, thing. But uh, do I have access to Team City? How do I verify the stuff that I'm putting in? Um, so you need access to, to Team City to go and test to see if the logs get formatted correctly. Yeah. So uh, I don't know whether uh, am I allowed to create a new build in there so I can create a build for my fork. Oh, so I don't have gotcha. To, so you I know what I can do. do. So, yep. I can modify. Um, I can go ahead and give you an account for Team City so you can rerun builds, uh, yep. so you can like manually do it. Would that that would would that help? Yeah, yeah, that would help. It cool. just needs to run off my fork. Yep. Yep. Okay, I could do that. Um, so, oh, oh, you want a Team City uh, uh, listen listening on your fork? Okay, got it. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I think I could set that up for you. Um, so I'll go ahead and add that as an action item for me today to go and uh, set up a, a listener on your fork. Um, so I'll I'll, um, I'll go ahead and create a project for you and, on Team City, and then I'll give yeah. you an account. And so you can add. Have, are you familiar with it? Do you know how to configure it and all that stuff? Yeah, I've been using it for some years. So yep. okay, good. Uh, I'll go ahead and add an account. I'll go ahead and add like a little sub project for you, and you can go and yeah. set that up. And I think I have a template for Aka.net builds that you can use that runs all the appropriate fake commands and everything else. You'll just need to add your own VCS to it, essentially, and then yeah. it should work. Yep. Okay. Good. Good. What, what um, do I do with the test that I ported? Because uh, I'll need to clean my fork first. I'll need should I need that there's a te failing test, failing multi-node test. Oh, you have a failing multi-node test. Yeah. Um, 
I guess what I would do is I'd go ahead and set your branch and such that multi that the failing multi node test isn't in it, and basically work on your changes in a separate branch for or your changes for the log formatting in a separate branch. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um. Cool. That should work. Uh, by the way, one other thing I've been encouraging some of the so I've been getting some Gitter messages from some other folks who are working on the Aka dot remote and Aka a cluster multi node tests. If you have a multi-node test that's failing and you absolutely don't know what's wrong with it, best thing to do is send in a pull request anyway and then ask for help. Like mention the Aka contributors list and say, I need someone to help me review this. Um, that's because basically being able to have that conversation using like diff comments on the pull request is really helpful. So, yeah. so a lot of a lot of folks don't want to send in a pull request so they have it working locally. And what I'm encouraging people to do instead is if you're really stuck and you need some help, like a second pair of eyes to look at it, sending in that pull request and asking for the for other people to step in and review it is probably more effective than just sitting there, you know, banging your head against your desk, right? So, um, so that's something that um, if you want help with that, uh, feel free to do that. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good. Um, so let's see. I'm going to unmute you, David. Uh, let's see. Actually, I think Graham has got to unmute you. <laughs> if you. If you don't mind, Graham. There you go. There you go, David. We can hear you again. Yeah. Um, so Sorry, David, it was noisier on me. It's okay. It's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, so David, have you had a chance to uh, start working on anything yet? Is there anything you want to share? No, me, I'm still on a road trip for another three weeks. Mm -hmm. And after, I'm back in Asia. So I will pick up back when I will be in Asia time. So okay. I, I'm just using my time that I'm in Europe, in Europe time zone to be able to catch with this meeting, which is more easy. <laughs> no worries. And, and by the way, did you get any update from any people in Asia about uh, the meeting and the timing? Uh, I, I have. I still have not gotten a suggestion from any of them yet. Um, I've had a couple of new of like Australian and Kiwi uh, contributors send me messages saying they want to help, but no one's proposed a different time yet. So I still am open to, to doing another meeting at a time that works better. I could do one like in the evening here in the United States, like around like 5:30 p.m. or 6 p.m. That's like if you're in Australia or Asia, that's going to be like 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. for you. So that's pretty early in the morning. Yeah. Um, so I could make that work here, uh, but it just uh, actually, you know what I might just do? I might just schedule another meeting at that time anyway and see what happens. Um, yeah. So I'll plan on bigger. doing, I'll plan on doing that starting next week. I'll um, so we got we'll have our normal meeting again on Tuesday next week for at this time uh, the twelve to one slot, and then I'll add uh, an Asia and Australia contributors meeting. On, I'll probably do that on a different day. Um, and do that one from maybe like uh, six to seven p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which would be like sometime in before lunch for you guys. So yeah, I'll do that. Um, okay, that Thanks. should work. Uh, so one other, so one update on my end in terms of stuff that I that I'm working on. Uh, so I got a prototype before I went to Brazil last week. I got a prototype up and running of a piece of cluster management software that Petabird is working on. So it's going to be it's going to be a tool that has a a free version and a paid version. Uh, the free version basically, and the only difference is you can use the free version like in def, like basically whenever you want in in dev and test. And but if you want to use it in production, you got to pay my license for it. And um, the prototype is like real ghetto. It only took me uh, a little while to sort of get it up and running. And I'm working on polishing it now, but. What it's going to allow you to do is you're going to be able to see all, like, it's going to journal all of the cluster events for, like, which members were unreachable, which ones joined, which ones left. So you'll be able to see, like, a timeline of that. You'll be able to go and, and most importantly, you'll be able to manage your nodes. So if you want to go and remove a node or you want to down an unreachable node, you can do that through this little web interface that we're working on. And then um, after we, one of the things I'm going to do probably beginning next week is I'm going to start extracting all the cluster metrics stuff out into its own library, just like on the JVM. And this uh, cluster management tool is going to be able to visualize and set alerts for you when your nodes go above like 80% CPU utilization or 
beyond this sort of a percentage of available memory, that sort of thing. So currently I'm working on a bunch of TypeScript uh, stuff today, doing a UI work for it. I had never done TypeScript until yesterday, and it's really awesome. Definitely encourage everyone to take a look at it. Um, so I'll be... Uh, sorry, go ahead, Suhas. Uh, I don't know, type tried uh, using uh, TypeScript twice, but I keep going back to JavaScript for some reason. I don't, I don't know, it's just not quite to me that I should be writing classes and interfaces in JavaScript. You, you know, for me, it's just that I've been out of practice with front-end development for so long. I At Marked Up, I had a really, really good like jQuery contributor, sort of like front-end yeah. engineer. It was just awesome, so I never had to worry about it. Um, and uh, most of the work I do on, on Aka.net is like low level, like concurrency and networking stuff. Um, so this is my first time getting back into it. And I was like, you know, if I'm going to relearn like how the web, how, because the JavaScript ecosystem has changed so much the past like yeah. three years since I've done it. I'm like, you know, I'm just, if I'm going to have to relearn this whole stack, I'm going to use like static typing. <laughs> TypeScript uh, must be good. I'm not <clears throat> saying because if Angular 2 decided to go TypeScript way, it must be good. Something in it. It's just that I somehow couldn't get on. I understand. Um, I, I I'm liking it a lot so far, and actually I'm going to be using VizJS, the same library that you're using, Graham. Um, so I'm going to write a TypeScript binding for that, since there is I haven't found a, a TypeScript definition file for that yet. So I'm going to be adding one, uh, and probably publishing that into the definitely typed repository. So that should be cool. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm up to. Um, some of the other things that have been uh, that's from contributors who aren't here, I've definitely been seeing a lot more activity around the Akadot remote multi-node tests. I'm working with two other contributors offline now. Uh, Graham, on your end, I still need to fix the throttling stuff built into the multi-node test kit itself to get that one test you have and a pull request to pass. So yeah. I'm, I'm running. Go ahead. It's not something I've been able to figure out. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not your fault. It's uh, the test itself. It looks like it's been written correctly. Actually, it's that there's infrastructure inside the multi-node test kit that's missing. Um, and so I started working on adding that uh, before I went to Brazil, and I got pretty far along with it. Um, but I I haven't had a chance to to get back into it. I actually broke my laptop where I had a bunch of that work. <laughs> um, so I should be, I think I pushed most of that to GitHub, so I'll have to go and double check, uh, but it's definitely, there's a chance that I might not be able, I, I might have to wait until I get that laptop back from the repair shop uh, later next week before I can pick it up. So it was in like a local branch I was working on. Um, so yeah, so lesson, lesson learned, always religiously push everything to GitHub. Um, I think I did like eight hours of the work that I might have, I might have forgotten to push. So that could be that could be bad. Um, so yeah, uh, I, does anyone have any other questions or anything else they want to discuss? Anything else we need to do? No, I'm good. Nope, no. good. All right. Uh, so as far as action items go, uh, Suhas, I will set you up with a Team City account. I'll do that right now. Um, yep. And then. So I'll set you up with that, and I'll create a project for you, uh, for your, for, so you can do testing around this stuff. Um, and uh, otherwise, uh, we'll go ahead and plan on meeting again in Tuesday, so it won't be, won't be too long before we see each other again. Yep. Um, and I'll set up a, I'll set up an Asia time for next week too, David, so we can start getting into the habit of doing that. So thanks for reminding me. Um, Okay, everyone. Well, hey, have a good weekend, uh, and uh, thanks for all the hard work. And I'm really, really pleased that uh, at the progress that we've been making so far. I think we're on track for a stable Akadot cluster release on October 1st. It looks like we're heading that way. So it might be, might, might be, might get pushed a little bit, but I think we're on the right track. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone, and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.